Hi, I'm joined by my friend Julie Bedell, who is going to show us how to make Christmas prune tarts today. And in Finnish, how do you say it? Yolo tortu. <laughs> Yolo tortu. <laughs> Yolo tortu. I'll get it. I can't roll my J's, so I'll practice that one. And I asked Julie because actually you gave me my very first prune tart. They're a tradition at Christmas for us every year. What is the first step? Well, the first step is you make your dough. Okay, and I'm going to show you a little bit how to make your dough. And then what you're going to do is you're going to chill it because you use real butter. And of course you want it to be a little bit chilled so it just doesn't go like smooth on you. So the first thing we'll do is we're going to, we have a little recipe here that <laughs> I'm sure you'll post for everybody. Yeah. So we want four cups of flour. And what we're going to do, it's very important to uh, sift the flour. That gives you a really nice, nice light pastry crust. So then the next is what I like to call the wet ingredients. We are using real butter. So we want one cup of softened butter. Okay. Now we want two eggs in, in there. That's part of our wet ingredient. Okay, and it looks like we have farm fresh eggs, so that's even butter because they're gonna be more yellow. I'm first going to cream the butter and the eggs. Okay. We want to get them to mix as nicely as possible. Okay. So we're going to cream them together. And as you can see, they're joining nicely now. We're getting a nice, a nice mixture. But we have three-fourths of a cup of sugar that we are going to want to put in there next into our wet. And so here we go. We've got one, two, and three. We're going to cream them some more. We want to get that sugar blended in there real well. Okay, so we have that all mixed very nicely. It looks like frosting. Ooh. So then what we're going to do is we are going to take our dry ingredients, which we have sifted very nicely here, and we are going to add a little at a time. I like to mix it in. And then I'll show you as we get it mixed, then we will begin to add our milk, which is about three-fourths of a cup, just to smooth out the batter. So it's mixing beautifully. So we're going to put a little moisture because we, we have a lot more flour to put in there. Now what is the purpose of adding slowly instead of like just dumping it all right in so right So you actually mix the ingredients well with, the, with each other, the wet with the dry. Okay. Because if you just pour it all in there at once, you wouldn't get it probably thoroughly mixed. I'm going to add a little moisture so we don't want lumps. We want it nice and smooth. All right, so now we have our crust, our pastry. You can, you can let that actually chill for about four or five hours and it would be ready. Or if you choose to leave it in there for days, okay. just pull it out a little bit in advance. You okay. don't want it real, real, real soft, mm -hmm. but it's, it's perfect because you have real butter in there. So. I love to do my filling from scratch. Okay. Okay. So None of the buying anything out of the jar or anything. <laughs> no, no, no. They're just not the same unless they're made from scratch. So I love to use these type of prunes. Okay. I believe this is close to a pound. Okay. And I always like to use one pound of um, prunes to one and one fourth cup of water. Okay. okay. So then, of course, what you will do, okay. you will put these on the stove. It'll probably take you about. 25 minutes or so to get these soft. Oh, okay. Okay. And Do you gotta uh, stir constantly or no, keep an eye on? No, you don't have to stir constantly. No, when this starts to simmer, we'll check on them. We'll just give them a stir once in a while. See, now they're starting to soften, but it takes a little bit. So we're just gonna simmer them, stir them once in a while. We're getting a wonderful sauce from them. We'll turn them down a little bit so we don't burn them. I like to add a fourth of a cup of sugar. Okay, because they're already pretty sweet. Just gonna sprinkle that in. I've turned the burner off. Okay, and I'm just gonna mix it up. And there we are. And there you have your filling. Yummy, that looks yummy, delicious. Yummy, yummy. <laughs> it's very good. Sometimes I just like to eat the filling. <laughs> and this is our prepared prune filling. So I take one egg, and let's just separate the yolk. The yolk from the white. 
so what we have is one egg white. Now I take just a dash of water and then we whip this. You know, just get it a little frothy. And these are what we're going to brush our tarts with. Oh, okay. Because and they're going to have a wonderful brown, light brown crust. It'll make them a lot crustier. Who taught you how to make prune tarts? There were three ladies, Martha, Mamie, and Vienna. And they, they love tarts. And so I began to always visit these people. So I began to say, hey, I want to learn how to, to do tarts. All right, so we're going to take some of our pastry crust. All right. And it's a little bit cold yet, but that's all right. That's a good thing. Because that way. All right. I don't like to put a ton of flour. Okay. We want to we want to kind of keep it as light and airy as we can. Mm -hmm. So then we're going to want to roll this out. And the recipe I've seen says one eighth inch thick. Is that a good? Right. Okay. Right, because you have to realize they're going to rise a little bit. Okay. So we don't want them real, real thick. So that looks about right. So now years ago, they did not have all these tart cutters, but they would cut them by hand. Okay. So I had my husband make these. He made one for all the elders because they used to always have to cut them by hand. So then what I like to do is the leftover um, crust, I like to shake the flour off and I do like to put it back in and mix it again okay. so that you don't have, you know, you have less flour on it. Okay, so this is the, the art of it. <laughs> now, I have rules. Okay. The square, I like to make sure that they get a lot of filling. Okay, so I like to get it out to the edge. So then we take one corner, bring it in. And I have another rule. <laughs> they have to they have to meet with each other. They have to line up nice. Okay. <laughs> but that's not necessary. Okay. Okay, so there we have our first tart. It's so pretty. And if they don't want to stick, you can dab a little bit of water, but okay. a lot of times that they, they do, because even though it's perfect. You should be able to, on that cookie sheet, you should be able to fit about 20 to 25. My family goes crazy at Christmas because I only make these at Christmas because they're a treat. One year I made 93 dozen tarts. Oh, what did you do with all well, those tarts? <laughs> I had orders in the copper country. <laughs> okay, okay. When they found out I could make tarts. <laughs> then what we like to do is give it a little dab. Not brush it, but we want to dab it. Okay. And we want to dab all the parts because okay. That's what's going to give us a really nice crust. Oh, okay, it's all about the presentation too. <laughs> it's all about the presentation and it's all about the flavor. Oh yes. Now we're going to put them in the oven, 350 for approximately 30 minutes. We're going to check them. Okay. So, and I have my mat rack about in the middle of my oven. See how nice and beautifully brown they are? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Golden brown bottom. That means they're done. A little bit of light brown on top. You're going to want to take them and put them on a cooling rack right away. They smell wonderful. They do smell wonderful. Mmm. 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 Delicious. Very good. The crust is perfect. Mmm. You'll have to share them. Uh, <laughs> maybe. 